Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy, and today we're going to review Batman, The Doom That Came to Gotham, new animated film that is out today on digital and Blu-ray, so be sure to pick your copy up right now and pick up the graphic novel while you're at it, because this is based off of an Elseworlds graphic novel set in 1920s Gotham City, where Batman is essentially battling uh, different forces on Earth that are trying to bring back the return of a giant Cthulhu-type god. And of course, that's going to be the case, because Mike Mignola, creator of Hellboy, is the guy who put this comic book together way back when and uh, did a great job at it. The book's amazing. Um, and the movie, I'm going to get into my thoughts about the movie here for sure. Uh, but I, I'm really happy because, you know, on one level it's sad. This is going to be my last animated film I'm going to be reviewing for Warner Bros. Home Entertainment. And I want to thank them for sending me DVDs and Blu-rays over the years to review for you guys. And every time they do, obviously I try to pay it forward and give someone the free digital code. So boom, let's, you know, start with that. There's the free digital code. First person to go to that website put in that code, they will get a free copy of Batman, The Doom That Came to Gotham. But everyone else, go out there and pick it up yourself. I want to hear your thoughts of this movie down in the comments below as we sink our teeth into this review. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy on the good side is that this was co-directed by Sam Liu. And Sam Liu, as I've created this channel over the last eight years and doing uh, Seek and Destroy episodes, uh, which will end, you know, episode 300 will be our final Seek and Destroy episode. And that's just because with my life and everything, with health, mental health, me sharing my life now with alters. There's some things just had to give. I had to make some sacrifices because, you know, there's 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 a lot more we have to do now. And, and either, you know, each one of us has our own goals and has things we want to do with our time. And so I just didn't want to be greedy and have all the time, right? And so, uh, so I had to cut back on some things. So this kind of works out, you know, because I've been wanting to wrap up Seek and Destroy anyway. And so I reached out to Warner Brothers and said, hey, thanks so much for the you know DVDs and Blu-rays over the years. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to step away for a while. And, and I hope that's OK. And they were super awesome about it. Um, always have been. I always loved uh, contacting them and, and having that relationship with them. And then, you know, meeting Brendan Vietti and Sam Liu, you know, who co-directed this movie. It's it, I couldn't have ever thought that my life would involve meeting all these great people and who I look up to. So first and foremost, I just want to thank all of you who have supported this show, the Seek and Destroy show, for over 300 episodes. It is more than 300 because we actually had almost 400 at one point, but because of COPPA and all that a couple years ago, I got nervous and deleted like almost 100 episodes. So we would be nearing 400 episodes, but, uh, you know, hey, you only live once and sometimes in that life you make mistakes, so it's all good. You know, we still have a good nearly 300 episodes here as a legacy to leave behind. And I will still do as you know, still do other stuff. I'm still doing the Venom vlog, but I just had a, something had to give. And this was the thing that um, I, I chose to give. So, uh, so thank you all, you know, for the support all this time. I really do mean, it means a lot to me and I'm glad I've been able to share, you know, digital copies of these movies as some way to say thanks. So whoever gets it, let me know your review down below and everyone else who's seen this movie. I want to hear your thoughts down below. We'll get into spoilers down there. But here I'm going to keep it spoiler free. So um, and then again, Sam Liu, like just never thought I would ever get to meet the guy. And so it's very fitting, I think, and very cool that my last review is going to be something he co-directed. So that's just great. And then uh, Christopher Berkeley was the other co-director on this. And Jace Ritchie wrote the scre uh, screenplay for it uh, based off the Mike Mignola and Richard Pace comic book, which is, like I said, very awesome. I would highly recommend checking it out as well as checking out this movie. Um, David Guentoli, uh, and Guentoli maybe, uh, uh, so butchering that name, I'm sure. I'm so sorry um, for that, but does a great job as Batman. I think the cast in this is really, really good. Uh, Karen Brar, who does Sanjay, uh, great character, really liked uh, Jay, they call him Jay for short. Uh, Gideon, uh, uh, who plays uh, Oracle. Jeffrey Combs, how amazing. Jeffrey Combs as Kirk Langstrom, uh, reanimator himself. Just really amazing cast. They got a lot of really amazing people in here, including David Desmelchin, who does the voice of Grendon at the beginning, who they kind of do a Mr. Zero, you know, Mr. Freeze kind of thing with. And uh, John DiMaggio as James Gordon, like really fantastic cast. Um, and there's a lot of cool characters that pop up in this. I mean, obviously we got Alfred, we got the standard Batman characters, um, but we also have Harvey Dent. We have uh, Kai Lee, who's a, kind of a newer character, um, but, you know, fitting for this universe based on, you know, the books and everything. Uh, we also have Dick Grayson as part of the cast here, Talia al Ghul, and then some other characters I don't want to spoil, but Oswald Cobblepot is in it, as well as Jason Blood, uh, who's one of my personal favorites, Etrigan the Demon. Um, so this is a very, like, Mike Mignola story. <laughs> I'll just say that. Um, we're going to get into the story now, and like I said, I'll, I'll avoid spoilers, but I want to hear your spoilers and your thoughts of the movie down below if you've seen it. And if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Despite my review, 
go check it out. You know, I'm just here to give you my thoughts, but I want to have conversations with people. So I need you to go see it so we can have a good conversation down below. Um, so this movie is, you know, set in 1920s, Gotham City. Batman or Bruce Wayne has kind of left Gotham for a little while to explore the world, looking for different uh, things and evils out in it. And along the way, him and his wards, you know, Sanjay and, and Dick Grayson and everything and Kylin, uh, Kai Lin, they all find this thing in the Arctic that leads them to uh, a creature that is out there, kind of a Cthulhu creature. And there's a lot of hints that this thing is going to come to Earth and destroy it completely. And there's all these prophecies and all this stuff. So it's a very different take on Batman. You even get the origin story of Batman retold but in a slightly different way, um, you know, so there's some surprises there and some things that tie Bruce directly into this prophecy. Um, but then you also have other great characters like Green Arrow shows up and he has a cool, you know, addition to the prophecy. And then it gets dark. I mean, I will say this does not pull punches when it comes to killing characters and uh, and having those kind of, you know, um, moments in the story. And also going in for the the you know, heartstrings like with Bruce and his family and kind of that connection and, and why their death actually meant more than you think and actually finding out who exactly killed his parents in this version was another cool twist so there's a lot of things that I think Sam and his team and, and Christopher Berkeley and all these people brought to this movie that I thought were very positive and that I liked um, the downside is it's the same thing with the comic book I'm not a big fan of like the Cthulhu monsters, the Elder God things. Like I'm just, that's not my cup of tea. I don't really find that stuff super interesting. You know, like I like more traditional supernatural stuff like vampires, werewolves, that kind of stuff. That's the kind of guy I am when it comes to those types of horror stories. So this one is very much a horror story and it has a lot of twists in it for sure. But it just has that being the foundation of like this giant creature with tentacles is just not my personal, um, you know, preference when it comes to these kind of stories, like uh, horror stories. So I didn't really like this. I like the one with Jack the Ripper a little bit more with Batman. Like that story, that Elseworlds is more appealing to me. This one is kind of like, uh, it's, I'm already fighting against the grain. But I still think what they did with the material was really good. And the way they brought some of those iconic moments from the comic books to the screen, I think only, you know, Sam Liu and Christopher Berkeley could have done that. I mean, that's hats off to those guys for sure because that pulled even me who's like kind of like eh, you know i'm not really in the source material i still found myself engaged while watching this and so yeah but i mean that's all the positive stuff like for the most part but some like i said my main negative though for me is just the basis of the source material i just don't personally gravitate to stuff like that i'm open to checking it out but this movie did a good job engaging me with some of the scenes but then by the end i will be honest i kind of just I don't know, I started, it lost my interest um, by the ending. You know, some of these animated films actually will pull me back in in the ending, like Green Lantern did, that recent one, uh, Beware My Power. I was kind of all right in the beginning, and then the middle started to lose me, and then the ending really brought me home. This one, I was engaged in the beginning, and then in the middle, it started to lose me a little because there's a lot of just people talking and dialogue, and, you know, there's a lot of, like, a prophecy talk and things like that, with some action scenes for sure. But then in the end, they get to this point where it just goes full-on, you know, Cthulhu monster craziness <laughs> with with other characters becoming monsters too. And it's just kind of like, uh, okay, yeah. So, and it kind of made me detach from the material uh, a little bit. Now, I know for, you know, from Sam's point of view and from these, you know, Christopher's and everyone who worked on this who have done numerous versions of Batman, this was probably a massive breath of fresh air for them because they could really go to places with Batman and Bruce Wayne that they could never go before that they didn't go before with other shows and cartoons and stuff they worked on and movies they worked on. So it was cool to see them kind of cut loose and just go all out with this version of Batman and his world and what it entails and kind of the tragedies within it, but also the horror in it. It's cool to see them just cut loose like that. And that is what kind of kept making me feel a little bit more engaged. Like I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, I haven't seen that before on a, in an animated film with Batman and okay, that's neat. But Again, because it's all grounded in that kind of mythology of Cthulhu and that kind of stuff. Not that it's exactly Cthulhu, but it's that type of stuff. You know, M Mignola's pretty big on that with portals opening up and tentacle monsters coming through. And that's ah, just not my bag. I don't find that too interesting. So I'd get pulled in, but then I'd see that kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. So from a personal preference, I just kept stepping back and forth in and out of this movie based on that alone. Because I thought, all right, well, maybe they'll do something interesting enough that it'll just it'll it will pull me fully in 
and it never really did, uh, in my opinion. But there is still some great sequences in it. Voice acting is top notch, and and some of the just art direction and just designs of some of these things are stellar. And seeing some of these characters reinterpreted in new ways, and seeing some of them meet very tragic endings, was heartbreaking. I gotta say, I did feel connected and on that level. So. If I were you, I would say go check this movie out, Batman the Doom that came to Gotham. Really cool stuff. Uh, like Again, not in my personal wheelhouse, but I only say that because it might be in yours or you might just be more open to that than I am. And if so, definitely check this out because I think it's going to blow your mind, especially the end sequence, which I've had one foot in the door, one foot out the door. But I'm like, man, for someone who would appreciate this kind of stuff more than me, their head is going to spin. Um, and that's, I mean, but that's my personal opinion. So if that is the case with you, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, we'll keep talking down there. So thank you so much for watching this episode. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for the eight plus years. Those of you who've been around since the first original first episode of Seek and Destroy, which was like in 2013, no, 14, I think it was late 2014. Um, you know, that's how long I've been on YouTube making content. And, uh, in the beginning, I just started out doing like Transformer, you know, reviews and toy reviews and DC toy reviews, Star Wars toy reviews. And I did a lot of that stuff in the beginning and uh, and slowly we built this channel. And once we got into a rhythm with Seek and Destroy and Venom Vlog, then we started to expand. And, and I, I owe it all to you guys for spreading the word, sharing my videos, you know, subscribing, hitting likes, commenting, engaging with me. It's just been amazing. And Warner Bros. Home Entertainment, like I really am grateful. I'm sorry I, that this is what I chose to do and it, it's cutting us off right now. But hopefully one day that, you know, bridge can, we can walk across it again and meet each other and shake hands. Um, it's nothing personal. Obviously, you know that as I emailed you, but it's just with everything I have going on, I have to pick and choose what I want to do right now so that my alters can also pick and choose what they want to do um, to be fair. And so, uh, so I'm going to miss getting these movies in the mail and watching them and reviewing them. Um, but I will say right here every DC animated film that comes out, you guys need to be watching it. To me, it's consistently since the nineties been the best part of DC. I mean, there's times where I like the animated stuff more than the comic books. I like the animated stuff more than live action movies or live action shows. And the consistency of how good they are from project to project to project is, has always been there. Even when I'm critical of it, I still know that other people love it and there's a consistency and I, if you're not a DC Animated Universe fan, you need to be. It is, in my opinion, the best of DC in general. And that's because of guys like Sam Liu and Christopher Berkeley and Brendan Vietti and all these amazing people that have uh, worked on these animated shows. Bruce Tim, Jeff Matsuda, like uh, Andrea Romano, like just the talent that is involved in a lot of these projects from past to now is stellar. And it's worth your time and money. So even though I won't be reviewing any more movies going forward from Warner Brothers Home Entertainment and DC Animated, please watch them all, buy them all, rent them all, whatever it is, support it, it because I I want it to stick around and I want it, to, you know, it's to me the best of the DC and I want that to always be the case. So, um, but let me know what your thoughts are down below. Let me know some of your favorite DC Animated movies down below and let's have that conversation. You know, uh, I'll always come back and look at comments on this video and anytime there's a new one, I'll jump in and chime in. So whether it's spoilers for this movie or spoilers for other DC animated movies, past, present, or future, let me know down below and we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'll see you in the future. Peace.